good morning to all today we are going to learn a second poem of 12th standard our casarina tree written by dorodat before learning the poem let us discuss the author introduction the dora that was a bengali poet from the indian subcontinent she wrote in english and french so she she is a indian poet as well as she had written english poem as well as the french poem she was the third daughter of the family she was a one among the third siblings in the family dora that family was family of distinguished intellectuals and poems so these people living in the family they are well known versatile about writing poem as well as they have a mastery of knowledge she also had the advantage of being taught by excellent english tutor at home and later on of the long stay in europe and england so after returning from europe and england she have a opportunity to uh, study english through a excellent english teacher english tutor Dora was all her exposure to and involvement in Western life and the culture loved the land of her birth and remained throughout in thoroughly India in her consciousness and sensibility. So she the sense the, she loved our country very much. Besides her well known collections of the poem with the title Ancient Ballad and the title Slew Cleveland in the Fra uh, Legends of Hindustan. So she was the famous uh, she was famous for the poem. ancient ballad as well as the legend of hindustan this poem was published in 1882 she has to be the credited the volume of poem in france title in french she had written sleeve gleveland in french field or casarina tree the most well known toradat poem which includes in her miscellaneous poem so she had written so many poem among that this toradat um, our casarina tree is very famous poem okay let us see what's there in the poem before entering to the poem they had given on warm up to us you visit your school after several years as you had crossed the banyan tree at the entrance cheerful memory fill your mind fill the bubbles with your memory so if you go to our old school you are learning in 12th after completing your schooling if you come again to our school what do you will think if you see all the uh, area which is uh, in our school the trees and the playgrounds all will help you to recall your childhood memories it fills your memory with the happiness the same thing how, this is the thing which they had given to us to recall our sweet memories let us enter to the poem what is given there like a huge python winding round and round the rugged trunk indented deep with scare up to its very summit near the star a creeper climbs in those embrass bone so in the first four lines she had explained about the appearance objective of the tree how the appearance of the tree is like a huge python python you all know huge means very big python means malapambu so the huge python winding you should not read this word as a winding we should read it as a winding winding round and round and round it means is climbing the tree round and round a rugged trunk indent deep with the scar how the trunk of the trunk means the stem the trunk of the tree is it's it indent indent means uneven because this tree is very big it takes 100 uh, 100 of 100 years to grow so what happened the the, the trunk of the uh, tree is not even it is uneven with deep scar so scar means mark there is a mark of on the tree because this the huge python climber is climbing on the tree up to its very summit near the star up to its very summit summit it means it, it represents the mountain how this tree look like it's very high and the climber is climbing on the tree up to the very summit near the star means it's reaching to the sky it's just this word is help us to describe the height of the tree the creeper climbs in those embrass born no other tree could live so if apart from this casarina tree if other tree is there in the place it could not climb because that climber is such a huge big in size and how it's uh, uh, climbing it's like a embrass born it have a tight holding on the tree this cli uh, climber creeps like a tight hold on the tree no other tree could live if other than this casarina tree no other tree could live 
but the gallantly the jane wear the scarf the flowers were hung in the crimson clusters all the bottom hung so how he had descri described the casuarina tree means chauk maram in tamil we can say this tree how other than this casuarina tree no tree can survive all they will fall down because of the strength of the creeper how, now but gallantly gallantly it means it shows the quality of man this words we will use to describe the quality of the man gallantly it represents it means very kind very good hearted man it means so this casuarina tree is very kind that's why it's the it suffers the wound the scar it's it represents its strength the jain wear the scarf this here the jain the term jain represents to the tree and the flowers hung in the crimson cluster cluster means bunch crimson it means a dark red color it represents the bright red color so how the flowers are hanging on the, hanging on the tree it's like a dark red color cluster bunch and all the both among so all the both means all the branches are there spreaded towards the sky where on all the days are gathered birds and bees and of at night the garden overflows with one sweet song that seems to have so no close sung darkling from our tree while men repose see the next four line what he first first four line he had explained about the huge python the climber how it climbed on the tree how it's embraced bond by this embracement he had ma make a square a mark on the tree other than this casuarina tree no tree can survive because it was very uh, very big so next four line what he said he said only the casuarina tree can survive with this climber and what is the quality he had mentioned here he had said gallantly gallantly is a term which we use for only to represent the man male and what is the meaning it means a very kind so next how it looks like the jain means here the jain represents the tree the tree is wearing a scarf and how the flowers are the flowers are hanging as a crimson cluster it's in a dark red bunches of flowers are hanging on the trees and these branches are among the branches broad among means among the branches the flowers are hanging where on all the day gather birds and bee all throughout the day there will be a birds as well as the bees are there and of at the night the garden overflows at the night time what happened the garden will overflow with one sweet song that seems to have no close there is a never ending song is there it fill the whole garden with a song sung darkling from our tree while men repose repose means when men sleeps it uh, represents the time night even the first beginning itself sung darkling darkling shows the night time so at the night what happened the garden is overflow with the song of the birds when first my casement is wide open through at dawn my eyes delight on its rest sometimes the moose in the winter all in the rest the gray balloon sits statues like along watching the sunrise while on the lower boat his puny offsprings leap about and play for and for and near coquillas hail the day so what happened when the when at the morning she opened the casement casement means a big window in the hall or in the bedroom is a big in size the window so when she opened the window what happened the at the dawn at the dawn means at dawn it represents the sunrise the early sunrise so at the dawn what happened my eyes delighted on the rest my eyes means here this eyes represents the arthur eyes when the arthur sees the dawn the uh, by opening the casement at the dawn she see the tree what happened it gives a happiness to her delighted means it's make her very happy why she is feeling happy let us see sometimes the most in the winter on his rest so sometime most in the winter this is things is happening at the season of winter season she represents the winter season on its crest c r e s t crest means at the top at the top 
So when she opened the casement widely, when she see, she uh, makes her very delighted because she is in the winter season. She is seeing what she is seeing: a grey balloon, Babylon, six statues alike alone. So Babylon, it means a, a man-like monkey, monkey. It's a big size monkey. That is a Babylon. So this Babylon sits like a statue. It's not uh, turning anywhere. Simply it is sitting like a statue, like all alone. It's alone there at the top of the tree. Who is sitting at the top of the tree? A monkey. What's the name? The Babylon. Watching the sunrise while on the lower boat. So it is what it, by sitting alone at the top of the tree, what it is doing? This monkey is looking at the sunrise. Its puny offspring leaps about and play. So it's puny. Puny means the young one of the monkey. That is puny. It's puny offspring, the young one. It's playing and down. And far and near, coquillas hail the day. Coquillas. Coquillas means it's a bird like our quill in Tamil as well as the nightingale. It's used to sing very nice songs. That is a speciality of the bird. Hail the day. Hi chai hail. Hail means it's welcoming the day. How they are welcoming the day by singing a song. See, let us recall this first stanza as well as this six lines. Like a huge python, the winding round and round, a rugged tree indent deep with scare, up to its very summit near the stars, a creeper climb in those embraced born, no other tree could live. But the gallant, the giant bear, scarf and the flaws are hung in the crimson clusters all the both among whereon all the day are gathered birds and bees and at the often at the night the garden overflow with one sweet song that seems to have no close sung the darkling from our tree while men repose so the first stanza he had explained us how the trees it's like the creeper is like a python it is creeping on them Casarina, casarina tree and how this creeper make a scar, uh, scar on the tree and how he, he explained the height of the tree it's like it's near to the summit and it's a very kind other than this casarina tree no can, no tree can survive then he had said that the, how the tree is it's like a giant a giant is wearing the scarf and the flowers are hanging it's a red dark red flowers are there among the tree and what happened there are the birds uh, there is always the birds and bees are gathering there and at the night the garden was overflow with the song and the next four line what after the night the early morning what happened when the Arthur opened the casement what happened she very happy to see the things which is the Babylon is sitting on the uh, sitting alone like a statue and it's watching the sunrise and what has happened at the lower boat what is happening the uh, puny offsprings are listening to the uh, uh, puny offsprings are playing and this babylon is watching the sunrise and what happened this coquillas are uh, hailing the day it's welcoming the day by singing the song and to their pastures wind wind of a sleepy cows and the past pasture it means uh, the grazing land where the animals can graze their food so the cows are there and how they are are sleepy cows why she had mentioned the word sleepy cows here because the at the dawn the birds the half sleep and cows are lying there and in the shadow on the broad tank cast a hot tree so beautiful and vast a water lily springs like a snow in mast so down there is a shadow on the broad water tank what happened at that Hor, H-O-A-R. Hor means, Hor, it means the snow covered, covered with the snow. The trees are covered with the snow. That is Hor tree. Why this is at the first beginning, she at the first, second line of the second stanza, she had mentioned that it is a winter season. Snow, so with the Hor tree means the snow tree is covered with the snow. And the water lily springs like a snow enmatched. Snow enmatched, enmatched is also the same meaning. It's covered with the snow. Here the, near the tank there is a water lilies. They are like a snow enmatched. So first 12 line, uh, 11 plus 11. First two stanza 
just she had explained about the first stanza she had explained about the objective of the tree simply the appearance of the tree the second she had explained about what are the things around the tree the third let us discuss about the third one but not because of its magnificent the dear the casarina to our to my soul beneath it 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 we have played through years may roll our sweet companion loud with love intense for your sake shall the tree be ever dear blend your image it shall arise in the memory still the hot tears blind mine eyes see this is the thing she had explained about the tree and the surrounding the third stanza immediately she has a personal touch on the tree no but not because of the magnificent magnificent means it's very big huge in size not because of the size i am uh, describing about the poem dear is the casarina to my soul this tree is very close to my soul very close to his heart her heart beneath it it we have played through years may roll so she is recalling of her memory of her childhood she had played under beneath means under she had played under the particular tree that year may roll the year may pass on our sweet companions loud with loud intense so this sweet compa- oh sweet companion represents to the, her brother and sister aro and achu she have a brother aro and achu is her sister she is recalling the thought which she had played under the casarina tree for your sake shall the tree be ever dear so this tree is ever dear it's always dearer to her heart blend with your image it means all our memory it's the mem- mem- we are memorizing all the things which she had played with her com- brothers and sisters siblings and all she is recalling and how they had played under the tree all this memories is it means the blend with our image it shall arise all the memories are arising in her mind in memory till the hot tears blind my eyes this because thinking of their brother and sister she started tearing shedding her tears this tears makes her eye to be blind because the at present they are not in the world they passed away so thinking about the, this tree what happened immediately she have a memory of their sibling what is that dread like murmuring that i heard like a sea breaking on the single beach it is the tree lament and the an airy speech and happily to unknown land may her reach so what happened all this memory make her to cry and what happened there is a dreadful like murmuring it means someone is singing a sad song or cry this is like it means a sad song or cry simply we can say cry there is a cry is murmuring she has uh, um, there is a soft sound of crying she can hear like a sea breaking on the single beach single beach means a rocky beach in tamil nadu or in our country we have a sand beach in the in uh, australia or some england that uh, the beach is like a snow ne rocky beach in the tree lament and eerie speech tree lament lament is also represents to a sad song there that's happily to unknown unknown land may reach so this makes her this voice of the tree or the the memories it makes her to reach to the unknown land unknown it well known to the eyes of the faith even the unknown land may be known by and considered as a well known because of the eyes of the faith if we believe in our eyes what happened this unknown land is also will become as a known land ah i have heard that veil for for away v w a i l veil means it represents the suffering these are the things are not in your book for you just know this words ah i have heard the wail far far away so she can hear the suffering of the tree or something the sad cry from a far distance in the distance land but many a sheltered bay it, she can hear this from the distance land and now she has sheltered bay it means it's across some continent and oceans she can hearing the voice of the cry 
when slumbered in his cave the water right the water right right means a god water god that is a water right see how she had explained the murmur of the sad cry it's crossing across the continent and ocean she can hear and the slumbered slumbered means when slumbered means sleeping slumbered means sleeping when slumbered in his cave the water right even this water god is sleeping in his cave even she can hear the sound the murmuring and the waves gently kissing the classic shore of france or italy beneath the moon so under the moonlight the waves are just they are uh, coming up near to the shore and they are going back this incident she had said that the waves are kissing the shore when the earth lay tranced in the dreamless moon and every time the music rose before the mind inner vision rose from the sublime so when the earth lay tranced in the dreamless moon it means the earth itself is in the sleeping mode it's not in a no uh, dreamy the transcend means dreamy the yet it's uh, the, she had already mentioned the water right is already sleeping slumbered in the sh- in cave and now she said about the earth earth is in the dreamy condition it's not in a normal moon so it's and in the dreamless moon moon means just we have a mayakam we can say deep sleep moon so now this uh, the earth is also sleeping and every time the music arose before my inner vision rose and form a sublime so what happened its inner vision inner vision means the memories in her mind what are the memories she is arousing the music is arousing in her mind from the glorious past period of the tree she is describing about the glorious tree sublime it means the glorious tree the form o tree as in my many happy prime my happy prime happy prime means the period it is thinking about she is thinking about the tree when she was a young she was very happy and the prime means happy i saw thee in your in in my own loved native climate she saw the tree in her own native climate here native climate represents the indian climate so let us have a recall of this second uh, third and fourth stanza she is not describing the tree because it is the magnificent it is very close to her soul and the, because they they with her swiplings she had played under the tree the year may roll but she is thinking about the uh, the companion the sweet companions represents to her brother and sister aro and achu at the time what happened this memories had filled her eyes with the tears even she is uh, she is now at the very far distance she can hear the sa- uh, the cry of the tree across the continent even the water right had uh, sleeping the earth is also uh, at the rest and even she can hear the cry of the tree see therefore i fain could consecrate the lay unto the honor the tree beloved of those who now is blessed asleep for a ray repose so here the last stanza she had uh, consecrate it means she make the tree to be holy immortal the deadless she is making the tree fain f a i n fain means she was very glad to make the tree to be the immortal making it holy fain means glad happy so she is happy to make this tree to be the immortal ele undo this honor she d t h e d means this d is represents the tree tree kesarina tree so the honor the tree beloved of those who now was blessed asleep for the for ere repro so she is represent here the she had used the metaphor uh, now it is the blessed asleep it's a the those the people those who are even they are blessed asleep means it represents the death it's representing the repose is also represents the death dearer than the life of me alas were there the may to be numbered when my days are done so she the tree should be alive even she was 
died also after her death also the tree should be alive she is thinking it should be alive she is blessing the tree that you should be alive after my death after she passed away also the the, the casarina tree will be alive because she had written the poem on the casarina tree that with the readers that the throughout the their life they can they can read this so one after another if this generation after this generation the people will start uh, start read this casarina tree so they will imagine the the tree will get a life with the deadless trees like those in the bar borodil borodil is a proverb tree this in this tree the words that make in this poem immortal he had make the tree to be the immortal like the borodil tree the casarina tree has to be immortal under those who are awful branches lingered pale fear trampled hope and death the skeleton and the time the shadow follow the thought weak the version that could they beauty feign and feign rigor rig- uh, rigors may love defend thee from the oblivion curse so what she is telling even the death all this trembling hope means hopeless and the death the skeleton lingered the pale all this represents awful means fear we are respect someone with the fear that is so awful so she is uh, uh, showing her respect with the fear and she is this all his words represents the uh, death so she while at the uh, while at her bed written she was attacked by the tb even 3 years before she had lost her uh, sister achu and his brother is also uh, dead so she is thinking she had used all these terms of death even even after her death also this tree should be immortal and though the beauty fain she is very happy to see the beauty of the tree and all fain rigorsal now this is a happy rigorsal happy rigorsal she is thinking about this happiness may love defend thee from the oblivion curse so she should be oblivion curse means it should be for oblivion means forgetfulness so it should be remember throughout our life so let us recall the first there are the five stanzas are there the first one she, she has explained about the uh, tree the majesty uh, the height how the pi- uh, the climber climb the tree and what are the uh, trees for and how it's looking it's like a uh, crimson clusters flowers are hanging on the tree and the garden is filled with the songs and next stanza she had explained about the surrounding when she opened the ca- cas- casement at the morning uh, at the dawn what happened she was very much delighted it what represents the winter season and there is one babylon she it is sitting on the top of the tree to see the sunrise and its puny offsprings are looking uh, playing down near that there is an water tank there it's a lily water lily spring out it is enmeshed with the Uh, covered with the snow and the trees are also hard hard tree she had mentioned it means the tree also covered with snow the third stanza she is telling there is a personal touch the first two stanza she had explained the poem about just objectively and the third stanza itself she had she have a personal touch with the tree and she said she this is uh, she is uh, describing the tree not only for its magnificence it is very close to her heart because it makes her to recall the memory of her past childhood which she had played under the tree and she had said this is this trees are now it is singing a sad song because she had missed the tree it is in her native climate and now she make the tree to be immortal because it should be alive forever even after her death thank you